Hello friends, I'm Kim Passable. Today, I am going to be working on my van. I'm going to be putting in a new leaf spring shackle. This doesn't just apply to my Ford van. Every car, truck, and van with rear leaf springs and shackle hangers is going to be about the same process. You would think it's pretty straightforward. There's two bolts, which I'll show you, that hold the shackle together. They never come apart nice, especially not by the time the shackle breaks. So there's a little bit of a end run that you're going to want to do. Save you way more time than it's going to take you to watch this video. Okay, so underneath the van, you can see uh, the, the uh, carnage. Oh, and carnage. Let's try from the other angle. All right, the great thing about working on this is you're not going to be able to see a thing. All right, here we go. Here is the frame and the frame bracket. They're actually pretty solid. Sometimes those rot out. Um, but here is the shackle. It is snapped off. It's already been welded once before. Um, you could see there, there's a plate welded on this side. And that lasts a little while, but then uh, now it's snapped off. The only thing holding the van off the ground is the 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 bottom of the bed of this uh, van or truck or the trunk of the car. If you've ever seen a car, sometimes uh, the springs will come up through the trunk of a car. Uh, and obviously I have some, I have to haul a trailer uh, to Tennessee, so we can't have uh no, that's not going to work at all. And uh, I was trying to think of a way to hold this, but you'd be surprised. That is a very dynamic load. Uh, every time you hit a bump, that's going to try and move. So this has to move freely. And uh, time and rust have definitely made it impossible for this to move. So we've got to get this off. We're going to save this spring, but we're going to have to drive this out and replace the bushing in there. Because if it's rusted this badly, this uh, bolt is not going to release uh Oh, it's not going to give up easy. It never does. Uh, so I'm going to show you uh, how I've determined. Same with uh, this bolt. It doesn't look that rusty, but on this side, it's definitely rusty. And uh, it's not even easy to cut off, but it is not going to want to come out of the bushing that's inside of there. What we're going to do is we are going to uh, fillet the tops off of these rivets. Take this whole bracket off, and uh, luckily Dorman come, has a kit uh, that comes with this bracket and this shackle, all the bushings and bolts, because somebody uh, has done this before, and uh, that will uh, well that will make us entirely safe, and uh, all the all the joints are going to move like they should, and restore all the handling and all the good things that you want your vehicle to do. All right, now our job is to fillet off the rivets on that bracket so that we can uh, start the process of rebuilding. Good news is the spring's way out of the way. Well, that's blade number one. Look, it's got fur! I didn't even get through that first rivet. Can you see it? All right, well, that's one. If you didn't think that was fun, I don't know what you're here about. At least it's not a bad cam and lifter set. There's just no other way to do this that's even remotely safe or practical. It's just garbage. There is no way to re record this. That one's pretty. Cut into this bracket even to get to the... Yeah, you know that one's off. 
last one couldn't be any easier to get at, could it? Let's see if we can get it to spin. If we can get it off of this. There we go. Okay. Now, if we can get it to rotate out of the way. Oh, gosh. That's going to have gone any better. Okay, good. Good, good. No clearance to get at that. Now I, I think I can actually get it. Of course, there's no place to hang a light. I'll just hold it with one hand while I hold this thing with the other hand. All right, let's see if it'll come off. Come off, bitch. Check it out. That is how it's done. Yeah, and it's gonna be a bastard, but ha only having one bastard as opposed to two is a really nice... I, I don't think I got any real good footage, but nobody was gonna wanna watch me grind all the way through them anyways. We do it nice because we do it twice. All right, we have removed the frame to shackle hanger bracket, okay? And uh, by cutting off, these were the uh, where the rivets were that we go through the frame and we're just Pump, the, pump them out of the frame and put bolts on. And uh, the kit that we bought comes with this bracket because removing this bolt from this shackle is going to be near impossible. If you look at the carnage, that is what uh, salt spray uh, and years of uh, rust on this van does to a bolt. That nut's not going to come off. We're going to have to cut it and and break it off with a cold chisel. And then that uh, rotten bushing there, you can see it better from the other side, how rotten that bushing is, is not gonna give up that bolt. And you might think, well, yeah, you can, you just heat it. But there is a, a metal sleeve that this bolt goes through. So those two are gonna be seized together, swollen inside of that uh, thing. You are gonna be heating and pounding and pressing and I mean it's rough time involved in taking these rivets off and for an extra twenty dollars the shackle kit comes with this piece and the bolts to put it back together so you just you know do it this way you're gonna save yourself a whole Saturday of aggravation now I still need to get the bolt that's gonna give me this trouble out of the leaf spring and uh, I don't want to have to replace the leaf spring, but this bracket, I don't care about. Um, it'll be nice and new and shiny and easy. Uh, so now I've gone from having two really troublesome bolts to one. Hopefully that saves you some time and aggravation. We're, we're moving along. Uh, we're losing daylight, so let's get back to it. A two jack system is going to help us here. Uh, if you don't have two jacks, you can use a jack stand and uh, some blocks. Uh, this is holding up the body and the frame. And then this one down here is uh, under, so we can uh, lift the axle back up when we're done. And we have to lower the axle so that we can work on this uh, part of here right there. See, she was all the way up against the... Uh, the floorboards up there. We need her down so we can get some work done. We're gonna cut off the head, not the head, the, the long end here, this bolt, and then we're gonna try and drive that way um, so that we can put the new bushing and save this leaf spring because uh, replacing the leaf spring pack is not on our to-do list. Sure hope it's not. Cut this nut in half. Come on, do the fancy. I'm gonna have to go back. Thought I got all the way through. I guess we could hit it with a hammer. Sometimes that works. Nut. 
It's loose. Come on, free. Free as the wind blows. Start with a little screwdriver. If it doesn't come off, you can use a bigger screwdriver. Cutting. There we go. You may be able to see she goes through a metal sleeve, and that metal sleeve is going to make our life a living hell for the next 20 minutes. Uh, sometimes you can get penetrating oil in there and get it to go, but that never works. I mean, sometimes it could work, but it never does. So we're going to try it, but it won't work. And then we're going to use a torch and melt what's left of that bushing out of there. But first we're going to try the thing that we know won't work because that's what we do. I took a screwdriver and uh, I did my best there to get as much of the rubber out of the face here. If we had a drill, we could maybe drill some of it out, but it's just not going to give it up until we get, we're going to use heat. We're going to heat this whole eye loop and we're going to see if we can get it to, once the rubber's soft, it'll push usually. It's time to use the fire wrench. Not to get it super hot, it's to get it, it's to just work the heat around, get it all loose. Once it starts moving, we can twist and whatnot, it'll come out then, once it's moving. It smells like a burnout competition under here. Careful, you don't want to set the uh, carpet on fire, if this is a van or a car, uh, but... Uh, I think we were gentle about where we put our heat. Let's see if we have any uh, movement yet. A little bit, I uh, don't think we're gonna yet, but maybe. Nothing yet, sir. Get the camera back in here. All right, it's moving now. Got it hot enough that it wants to go. Don't like it in there, it wants out. All right, and that's how you get it apart. If you got this far, you've got it. You've got it. I probably have to lift this, the jack back up to get that all the way out. I guess we can do that for you. We'll show you. Lift the axle back up. And that puts uh, that so I can get it out of the way of the frame and now we can well we can hit it with something
We might have to give it another cycle of heat, but we're close. Chalk your wheels front and rear when you're, especially when you're lifting the rear axle, you're going to lose your park. That's how we do it in the rust belt. So it, you would think that it should be easier than that, but it never is. So I'm going to clean it up for the night and then tomorrow I'll be able to slap her back together. That's wonderful. I feel great about only needing an hour and a half because there have been times in my life where I didn't know what I was doing and I spent five hours trying to accomplish the same thing. I didn't cut myself, burn myself, anything like that. So uh, it's been a good day. Uh, I hope that you have just as much success and uh, like and subscribe. I'm always making something. Sometimes I actually even get things fixed. Thanks for watching. This is the Dorman Leaf Spring Shackle and Bracket Kit that fits my van. And uh, this is the, uh, this is everything that comes in it. There's the, the bracket, the shackle, and all the hardware necessary, it looks like, to put it back together. And that is the uh, removed piece. It's hard to see, but it's, it's the same, uh, which makes thing life easy. This is what uh, years of rust, you can see how pitted and uh, swollen that centerpiece is, and it gets replaced with uh, with that. I had a little struggle getting the new uh, sleeve in. I cleaned it out real good, and now it's lubricated, and hammering is not working. So I'm going to set you up. I've got uh, a bolt through there. I found a long bolt, and I'm going to see if I can press it in there with just a bolt and some washers. If this doesn't work, I'm going to give it some heat, but getting tight, but not too tight. That there, I just saw it move. If I smack it now, no, ah, there it goes again. Yeah, this is going to work good. There we go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Love it when a plan comes together. If I had some air tools that fit, Yep, I'm going to have to use a cup on this side. Pinky exercises. Oh, that's not the pinky. Got a welding clamp, and that's just to keep this in alignment from falling out of place, because I've only got two hands. And then a uh, vice grips on this end of the, the bolts so that it doesn't spin on this side. And then I just have to tighten this, and then this socket will act as a cup to let this pull over the rest of the way. Because it was bottoming out on the bottom of this washer. So I got to get that last half inch in there. And uh, that's like a 22 millimeter socket, maybe a little bigger, one and a quarter. I don't know. It's, I think it's a one and a quarter socket. So you're going to need a big socket, some kind of cup to force that over. Luckily, I have run into stuff like this in the past. Big purchase, one of those big sockets, but that's how it goes. If you don't have the tools, you can't do the work. Potentially put a block between here and heat this spring and pound on it, but I much prefer doing it this way. You could drill a, a recess in a block of wood and put a big C-clamp on it. Uh, that could maybe work. You know, you got to be resourceful. Use what you got. It's moving again. I think we're almost there, though. It's not really fighting me too hard. So, you see, if I run into any problems, I'll come back. To get the old rivets out, we had to grind them flat uh, because this, this, the flare, when they punch them in there, was, was holding them. So we ground them flat. And then we hit them with a center punch and they just pop right through. This upper bolt is not in the other direction because it will interfere with the bracket once we're mounted up. This lower one goes through from this side. That one goes through from... First, put this together. Then, place your bracket in place. You can put one bolt in and then twist. We're also going to lower that axle. It's going to give us a little better... Uh, now you can just twist this right into place. You know, I don't want to celebrate too quickly, but 
I'm feeling pretty good about where we're at at this point in the day. And four. These are hardened. These aren't just grade five bolts. These are 10.9s. So uh, they're pretty strong. And uh, yeah, we're going to put them in good and tight. And that is going to be way safer than that mess that we had in there. And uh, less trouble than uh, any crazy contraption I was thinking of to try and chain it down. Um, it was a little bit more work, but it's also done now. So uh, if anything else happens, I'll bring you back. But I think this is going to wrap it up.